Okay. Good morning, Fulton First, and everyone online. Um, today is uh, April 22nd, the third Sunday of the Resurrection. I am hopeful that we'll have more than one day of summer this year before winter starts in again. <laughs> but looks good. Um, I was studying the Old Testament this week, and I want to share you share with you a, uh, a chapter from um, Ecclesiastes, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter six, verse eleven. The more you speak, the less meaning it has. So why overdo it? Um, so so I'll try not to overdo it. You'll be blessed. Um, we are thankful for today's web sponsors. De- Debbie Bernard, and thanks for your family's uh, support of the church and the Vosberries in honor of Joan Vosberry's birthday. Um, yeah. Put your hands together. Now, please stand for the lighting of the altar candles. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Now, is there any announcements this morning? And if anybody has any, please come up to the microphone. Good morning, Laura Bishop. And we have a book club meeting tonight at 6 o'clock here at the church. We're going to be discussing the book, The Nightingale. Also, um, our next book for the month of May is Just As I Am. It's an autobiography by Billy Graham. And this is not a part of the book club in the bag program. So you'll have to go ahead and reserve a copy through the library and check it out yourself. So if you're interested, please join us for our last meeting this school year. It will be May 20th. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Maddie. I'm the Children's Ministry Director. And um, coming up in May, we're going to have another event. We're going to have a Mother's Day tea. So I have a couple things that I need um, donated and just saved. I'll have a list out in the Narthex, hopefully on Tuesday, and I'll send a list to Nancy as well. Um, And we have a VBS meeting after church today. Um, We'll be downstairs, and we'll just talk about planning and whatnot for VBS this year. And uh, my last announcement is if you're interested in teaching children's church this summer, please get a hold of me. We have an awesome curriculum. Um, It's called The Gospel is Told by Dr. Seuss. Every week there will be a Dr. Seuss book. It's a lot of fun. Um, So if you're interested, please let me know. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Adele Haskins. Um, I am here to announce that the chicken and biscuit dinner will be May 19th from 4 to 6 30. I will be at the Welcome Center after church and I have tickets available and they're selling pretty fast. So if you're interested in coming to the dinner, see me after church and I'll get you some tickets. We also would like um, anybody that would like to donate desserts. Um, Carolyn Mosier's small group will be doing the dessert area, and they would welcome any donations that you would like to bake. So um, you can either see me or see Carolyn, and we'll get you in touch with where you need to go and where it needs to be. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Travis. Um, I'm a member of the hospitality team. We're going to be meeting this Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m., If anyone's interested, come and see what it's all about. We welcome you. Thanks.
Good morning. I'm Karen O'Brien, and I'm a member of this church, and I'm your worst nightmare because they were real fast. I have a speech, <clears throat> and I need my glasses. I am not only a member of this church, I am what I call part of the thing team. Some of us call us trustees, but I'm not sure what a trustee is, so I refer to us as the thing team. We worry about the things that make up this church. But we don't do it alone. You are there over and over again. This winter, things have been happening that you may not have noticed. Ice got chopped off the roof. Salt got put down in the entranceways, and all of them were shoveled. Thresholds were put down in doorways. The sign out front has routinely been changed because someone kept that pathway plowed and someone built us a new box for our letters. New doors have been put in the Welcome Center. New lighting makes our church brighter. Sorry, Pastor Niles, it's the lights too. <laughs> our emergency lights have been installed the pews have been polished and vacuumed. The sanctuary and narthex has been made beautiful with seasonal decorations. The coffee hour after church has become a time of sharing, food, friendship, and learning. Throughout the year and during the holidays, our community has helped with gifts of food and presents. Oh, wait, I gotta forget. I mean, I don't wanna forget. At the end of this, I have a science test for you, so I don't know if you need to prepare, but I've got a science test at the end, so bear with me. There are more things, however, that are happening in our future. This spring, our youth group has volunteered to paint our storage shed, which you may or may not know we have. It's behind the St. Paul emissions box. Someone had said they would help me spiff up our community pavilion so that we could have more events there. Hopefully, someone will come forward to help with our community garden. Hopefully, someone will come forward to do the raking necessary to prepare for summer mowing. But the Thing team has even more dreams and bigger dreams. Reverend Niles pointed out to me this week that we have two church signs, one's on Route 48 and one's on Route 76. I hadn't noticed either one of them, part of which is because they're old, bent, and they need to be spiffed up. Sorry, I lost my place. Our message has to be warm and friendly, and to that end, we are in the process of getting those signs replaced so people know that we are current and vibrant and that we're part of this community. Our shed door needs to be replaced. It's one of those garage doors, and it's old and tired, and I'm hoping that we can get that replaced. As you know, we're in the third year of getting our parking lot revitalized. Our church needs to be painted. All these projects lie in our future. I, on the other hand, am hoping we can squeeze in one more in the next couple of years. I would love to see us have an electric sign out front so that when people went by, they could see our message and know that we are here, that we are part of the community, and be aware of all we do. We know this can't all be done. We know some of them are dreams but it's something to look forward to. As you've heard, our church, like all churches, are in need of money to do these projects. There are so many working to do that. Tom Brown and the golf tournament, those working on the chicken biscuits and gravy dinner, creative ways to support our church will always be necessary. We're always gonna need money. But we do have something in great supply and that is you. A few weeks ago, you heard from Mr. Somerville and Dr. Smith that they came to this church because it was warm, caring, and had camaraderie. In essence, it is about us. Okay, you ready for my science test? I hope this works. What would you do if I do this? What would you do if I do this? 
what would you do if I say yes? Yes. yes. <clears throat> you pass the test. That is what I'm talking about. We have us. This is the energy, the enthusiasm, and a belief in what this church can do, does do, and will always do. When you're young, you don't have much. You make do, you do it yourself, and you do it with the help of your friends. This church is young by its members and its attitude. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Al Mosier, and uh, just a word on the community garden. If some of you are interested in a plot, uh, let Nancy know, would you? Because we're kind of trying to figure out for the size of the community garden how large we should make the plots. So if you're interested, please let Nancy Nixdorf know. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody for the information. And I thought something was wrong. Al, I didn't see you show up at first, so I thought something was wrong today. <laughs> but, uh, just joking around. All right, now the choir intro is next, please. Thank you. Um, please stand for the call of worship. <laughs> for the Lamb of the center of the throne will be their shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water. Jesus is our leader. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. Amen. Okay, please stand for the opening hymn, My Redeemer Lives. Who taught the sun oh, where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? The 
the invocation prayer so please pray father we gather for your worship today so that you will encourage us encourage and bless us with your word the good shepherd jesus christ fill us with your spirit so we will recognize the voice of our shepherd jesus christ father thank you for this time of worship we are thankful for your loving guidance of the good shepherd jesus christ amen <clears throat> Please stand for the Lord's Prayer.
Now the congregation should greet each other joyfully with the passing of the peace. offering but you can sit up here keep my company yes right at the end oh. offering right go ahead yes let's move it on so, um, towards the end I'll let you know it's in there right Now the offertory prayer. The Spirit of God has made us. The breath of the Almighty gives us life. We give joyfully and thankfully what we have. Please accept our tithes as our sacrifice to you. Amen. Amen. Now the ushers will collect our offerings.
Okay, thank you. Uh, today is a great day. We have the sacrament of the Holy Baptism. Um, we present and welcome to you Avery Matthew Bavacqua. So put your hands together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. May I present Avery Matthew Bavacqua for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, Matthew's parents, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Finally, parents, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Thank you very much. And to the godparents of the sponsors, will you help to nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. I will. Thank you. I ask the congregation to stand. Please respond to this question. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. We do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? We will. We will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us all join in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We are going to pray. Those of you who 
are following. It's page 36 in the hymnal. Let us pray, thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the one who will be baptized in it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness through his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in Christ's final victory. All, All praise, praise to you, you eternal Father. Father. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Name this child. Avery Matthew, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By baptism, we receive Matthew into the congregation of Christ's flock and pray that he will not be ashamed to hold fast the faith of Christ crucified to fight against evil and to persevere as Christ's faithful soldier and servant to his life's end. Matthew, every Matthew, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Give him back to his father. <laughs> God bless you. Please remain in your place. Let us say together, my dear sisters and brothers, page 37 of the hymnal. Now it is our joy to welcome Matthew in, in Christ. Let us say together. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you, Matthew, as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. And now we present uh, Matthew's mother. Sorry, Avery's mother. <laughs> Avery's mother with a lighted candle. And this candle symbolizes that your son Avery is a child of God. He is Jesus' disciple. He is a light in this world. And we ask you to use this candle on special occasions to remember the promises made here today and to remember that God is with you always and his light is in Matthew. We'd like you to, sorry, Avery, Avery Matthew. Please face the congregation. Please face the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our joy to present to you 
our newest member, Avery Matthew. A round of applause, please. We also present Avery with a blanket specially made by our quilters. We want to acknowledge that. And his baptismal certificate is also there. You may extinguish the candle, please. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for participating. Have a seat, please. I keep thinking of your name. God bless you. Thank you. Children's Ministry, and he will, we will sing the hymn of number 126, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, verses 1 through 4. Yes, we invite all the children in the congregation to come forward, please. to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Sing up. Alleluia. Continuing our theme of some great things done by little ones like you, we will show you a video at this time. Please pay attention. Let us pray. I decree and declare God you granted the children supernatural strength and ability to fight, a good fight of faith. I decree and declare they are qualified to share in Jesus' inheritance. I decree and declare they are reconciled to God. I decree and declare they are firmly rooted, built up, and established in the faith. I decree and declare they are restored of great wealth. I decree and declare they 
to you, Lord. Yes. Say yes. yes. You heard all those things that he prayed about, which he decreed. Please accept those blessings. And may God prosper you and continue to guide you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace and his blessing this day and always. Amen. God bless you. You may go with Matty to Children's Church, please. To share with you um, this item, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you very much, my son, our son, Japheth, and my wife, Lorna. Thank you so much. Let us stand for a reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, 11 to 18. Read with me, please. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. When the hired man, who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep, 
sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me. And I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated, my sisters and brothers. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In the gospel according to St. John, we find some statements made by Jesus that are known as I am sayings. In these sayings, Jesus draws on a familiar image to make a claim about himself. Our reading today highlights one of these sayings. More than once in today's reading, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. This I am saying uses imagery from shepherding, from agriculture, which was a popular occupation at the time. These I am sayings, which we find in the Gospel according to St. John, describe or give a picture of what Jesus is or what Jesus means to those who believe in him, to those who trust him, to those who follow him. I am the good shepherd. One only needs to think about the kind of relationship that should exist between the shepherd and the sheep to appreciate what Jesus means here. Now, there are shepherds and there are shepherds. Jesus doesn't say, I am a shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. And the first thing to note, my sisters and brothers, is that Jesus, the good shepherd, cares about his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That is how much Jesus cares for his sheep. He is willing to die for his sheep. These words of Jesus indicate the extent to which he will go to protect his flock, to save his flock, to rescue his flock. He would lay down his life for the sheep. And that is the kind of commitment that will go, the kind of commitment that will make him go to any length to demonstrate how much he cares and how much he loves his sheep. I want you to know that in the passage, Jesus contrasts the attitude of the hired hand or the hired man 
with that of the good shepherd. The hired hand has no real commitment to the sheep and would abandon the sheep in the face of danger when he sees the wolf coming. The hired hand would run in order to save his own life. That shows no commitment. The good shepherd on the hand, on the other hand, Jesus the good shepherd is willing to die for the sheep, to face any danger, any threat, in order that he might save or protect his sheep. Now, I've heard of people who proclaim their loyalty and commitment to others by saying that they would do anything in order to save or defend another. In fact, if you've been listening to the news, it has been widely reported that a certain attorney said that he would be prepared to take a bullet for the president in order to protect the president. He would be prepared to take a bullet for him. Now, the litmus test of such a claim comes when people who say such things find themselves face to face with real danger. What would you do in the face of real danger? In the case of Jesus, he has demonstrated that his claim is genuine. His claim is sincere. Jesus, the good shepherd, whose life was given on the cross for us, so Jesus, for Jesus, these were not just empty words, but these were words that he actually lived out, that he actually held, he remained true to his words when he went all the way to the cross and gave his life so that you and all who believe in him may be saved. The other thing I'd like to bring to your attention is that Jesus, the good shepherd, knows his sheep. Here is another characteristic of the good shepherd. The good shepherd is familiar with the sheep. The good shepherd has an intimate knowledge of the sheep. In fact, Jesus says in verse 14 of John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. The good shepherd cares enough about the sheep to get to know them. You really know when someone cares about you by how much that person tries to get to know you. And Jesus, the good shepherd, knows his sheep. And this is a, an indication of the, the kind of relationship that Jesus, the good shepherd, desires to have with those who accept him. A personal relationship with Jesus where there is understanding, mutual understanding, where Jesus understands us and we understand him. The good shepherd knows the needs of the sheep and will provide for the sheep as best as possible. Jesus as the good shepherd is not remote, detached, or aloof. It is possible to know him and it is possible to be known by him. And the third thing I'd like to leave with you today, my sisters and brothers, as we reflect on Jesus, the good shepherd, is that Jesus, the good shepherd, wants all his sheep to be part of his flock, of his fold. Hear the words of Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, I must bring them also. It is clear to me from this statement 
that Jesus is interested not only in those already part of the flock, those already in the fold, those already safe within the pen. Jesus is interested in those who are not yet within the fold. And there is in what he says a clear emphasis on reaching out and bringing in those sheep that are not yet in the fold, that are still on the outside. And I like you to see here how Jesus regards those who are not yet in the fold. He says, I have other sheep that are not of this pen. In other words, according to his own statement here, they are his only that they are not yet where they should be. Even though they are still outside the fold, still not yet part of the flock, he regards them as his own. And this is a reminder, my sisters and brothers, that Jesus cares about all of us, all people, not just the people who come to church every Sunday, not just the people who already proclaim that they are saved. Jesus cares for the unsaved. He cares for the unchurched. He cares for those who are still outside the gate, outside the pen, outside the flock, outside the family. Jesus cares for us all. Yes, friends, Jesus, our good shepherd, doesn't want any to be separated from him. The Bible tells us that it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come and have eternal life. God loves us so much that Jesus came and gave his life for us so that we can be part of him, part of his flock, part of God's family. That is what this cross represents, the death of Jesus. And we celebrate his rising from the dead so that those who believe in him, those who come to him, might have life in all its fullness. I close with this story. It is said that Cyrus the founder of the Persian Empire, once had captured a prince and his family. When they came before him, the monarch asked the prisoner, what will you give if I release you? The half of my wealth was his reply. And if I release your children, Everything I possess was the response. And if I release your wife, the prisoner responded, Your Majesty, I will give myself. I will give myself. The story goes that Cyrus was so moved by his devotion that he freed them all. As they returned home, the prince said to his wife, wasn't Cyrus a handsome man? With a look of deep love for her husband, she said to him, I didn't notice. I could only keep my eyes on you, the one who was willing to give himself for me. I could only keep my eyes on you, the one who was willing to give himself for me. Friends, sometimes we form loyalties and, and friendships that in the face of danger may not stand up for us. They flip on us in order to save themselves. But I say to you this morning, who are gathered here and those who are listening, that we can rely on Jesus. 
We can rely on Jesus, the good shepherd, to be always there for us. No matter the circumstances, he loves us and cares so much for us that he will go all the way for us. So I say, come to him. Get to know him who gave himself for you and for me. He gave his life for us. Let us in return give our lives to him that he may use us to his glory and that we may experience the abundant life that he came to give. I commend this good shepherd to you today and always. Let him be your guide. Let him direct you and provide for you always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare to listen to the choir, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to our brother Ryan Green for leading us today as well as he did. Thank you so much. And now we listen to the choir.
And now our final prayers. The Lord be with you. On this earth day, we praise you, Almighty God, for the creation, especially for this planet that we inhabit, and pray that we will be good stewards of the earth. We pray that we may take care of the environment and will do all we can to protect and preserve it for generations to come. O oh, Sovereign Lord, bless the earth and all its inhabitants. On this earth day, we pray for those who celebrate a birthday, wedding anniversary, promotion, a good medical report, or other special event, that they will be honored with long life, continued faithfulness and love, and increasing success and good health. We pray especially today for our brother Joe, giving thanks for your hand of mercy upon him, Lord. We pray in thanksgiving for the Vosbury family, sponsoring today's web ministry in honor of Joan Vosbury's birthday. We pray in thanksgiving for Debbie Bernard as she gives thanks for her family that supports the church. We thank you once again, O oh gracious God, for Avery Matthew, whom we receive today into the church by baptism. Bless him and his family and all his sponsors and supporters. O oh sovereign Lord, bless the earth and all who celebrate on this day, Earth Day, we pray for the sick, that they will be assured that their Creator cares for them, and that they have a good shepherd who knows them and is watching over them. We pray that all who are sick will continue to put their trust in you for healing. Norman Noel, Vivian Niles, Nancy Whitens, Joyce Richmond, Brian Hyde, Tom Maribito, Mike Gordon, and others whose names are listed in our bulletin. O Sovereign Lord, bless the earth and grant mercy and strength to the sick. On this earth day, we pray for those who mourn that they will take comfort in the knowledge that in death their loved ones are returning to their loving Creator by whose power Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. We remember today the Bush family as they mourn the death of their loved one, Barbara Bush, and others who mourn today. O Sovereign Lord, bless the earth and grant comfort to the grieving and rest and eternal life to those who have died. On this earth day, we pray for our nation and all nations of the world. We pray that those who lead us will work to bring order and not chaos, peace and not war, love and not hate. We pray for our institutions, for schools, colleges and universities, that they will be safe and good conduct will prevail. Watch over those presently on spring break. Protect those. Protect our institutions from negative activities and grant journeying mercies to those who travel. O oh, sovereign Lord, bless the earth and grant the light of wisdom and truth to all who lead us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, Savior, like a shepherd lead us.
In your name, Lord God, we go forth in your strength to be strong, in your wisdom to be wise, in your grace to find our sufficiency, in your Holy Spirit to abide in love, joy, and peace. Thine is the kingdom, O God, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, everyone. You're invited to the fellowship hall for refreshments.